As I come to this passage and I try to understand what Jesus was saying to his disciples, bouncing from the story of the rich young ruler who came to him who wanted to know how he could inherit eternal life. Do you know the other danger that is happening even in Christendom as I speak? There are those who are following this idea, and I don't have time to explain, progressive Christianity. And it's a subtle lie from the enemy that you can work your way to heaven. There are some entities we call Christian that teach you that. By good works you can work your way to heaven. Jesus said, if you want to have heaven, it's not a partial exchange, it's not a little here, little there, or I'll give you 99.999. Jesus said, it's a full surrender. All to Jesus, I surrender all to him, I freely give. Really? In the Christian world and in the Christian work, it is very difficult area for every one of us to come to the place of total surrender. And guess what God does? He calls for full surrender. God doesn't say just come and we'll work out a plan for you. You know, it's like you go and get a loan for a mortgage and the bank works with you what you can afford to pay. This is not God's plan, people. God's plan says to all of you. And my goodness, in our world today, that is an awful word to hear that God wants all of us. Everything that we are, we have, we surrender to him. You see, God calls for full surrender. Romans 12, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Many want to be a Christian in order to escape hell, but so few want to be a disciple. Look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Paul writes, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And if Paul would have stopped there, he said, that, that's good, I wouldn't have to take 10 times all for the headache uh, that verse can bring to me. But look at verse 2. Paul goes on to say, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And people, I have done this as a young believer one time, trying to think, I want Jesus, but I also want this. So I want to carry this, uh, but then I found that anytime you carry something else, carrying your cross is very difficult. Remember Jesus' word, if you want to be my disciple, carry your cross and follow me. <laughs> you know what I've discovered in my own Christian walk? If you carry anything else, you won't have the strength to carry the cross. So right there comes that hard decision, what do I want to carry? Jesus said, you want to be my disciple? You go to carry your cross and follow me. But let's not stop there. Being disciple requires death to self. You won't hear that much, you know, and you won't uh, get nice people, smooth people like Joel Olstein. He writes about your best life now. Really? It completely contradicts God's word. Being disciple requires death to self. Galatians 2.20, Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. 
And in the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. These believers in this country where persecution was rampant, come Sunday morning, they are going to worship. Some of the friends who know what they're going to do said, how could you do this? You guys seem to be determined to destroy your life. Why would you want to do this? You can stay home and believe in your heart. Isn't it better to keep safe and prolong your faith in God than go to a place where you know your life could be snuffed out that very day? One of the men who was leading this group going to worship, he started reciting this with tears in his uh, eyes. He said, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's discipleship 101. You see, Christ is put in his rightful place, first place. Matthew 6, 33, Jesus said, but seek first, not second, not third. Don't make coming to me the second or third option because something else that you uh, want to do got canceled out, so now I will make myself to go and Seek Christ. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these things shall be added to you. So you see, the challenge to discipleship will never end until our Lord and Master comes and claims us to himself. It's always there. It's always going to be there. It's going to be a struggle for all of us because you know sometimes we like holding a few things dear to our hearts we begin this message talking about the simplicity only God can give eternal life only good God can give eternal life then we look at the strictness only God can do the impossible you cannot save yourself I cannot save myself the church cannot save you the Pope cannot save you. Billy Graham cannot save you. The country you live in cannot save you. The only one who can give you eternal life is God. And sometimes it seems like it's impossible. Then who can be saved? The disciple asked. Jesus said, with men it's impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Thirdly, we look at the surrender. Only God is totally fair. Because the Bible says, while we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. And the most unfair exchange in the history of mankind happened on the cross of Calvary. But you know what it requires? It requires for you and me to come. As they sang during Billy Graham crusade, most of the time they're saying, just as I am without one plea, I come, I come. So you see, when you come to the Church of Jesus Christ, come empty-handed. Not empty-headed, empty-handed. Come with an empty heart and let it fill you. Because when you are His, all these things that seem so glamorous now will mean absolutely nothing. Because when you have eternal life, nothing can be compared to it. This side of eternity. Pray God will bless your time as you hear this message. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Bless your word. Open our hearts and our minds to know the truth that sets us free. For in Jesus' name we pray.